Today we are going to be discussing about acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome is a unstable clinical situation where myocardium is threatened due to lack of blood supply related to a obstructed or semi-obstructed coronary artery. Acute coronary syndrome, the term signifies a spectrum from unstable angina to a myocardial infarction. Unstable angina is due to a unstable plaque ruptured with a thrombus formed upon it causing a compromise of blood supply to the myocardium involved. Acute myocardial infarction is related to cardiac damage due to such uh, compromised coronary perfusion. Usually patients present with uh, pain at rest which is persisting. The pain is a dull ache that radiates up the neck or down the left shoulder or along the right shoulder along the left or right arm. In addition to uh, the pain or angina, the patient may also experience uh, diaphoresis, which is sweating in the face, and also nausea and vomiting, particularly if the inferior region of the heart is involved. Now, when the patient is brought to your uh, attention, the first thing that you should do is to ensure that the patient is hemodynamically stable that the patient has a good blood pressure, a good pulse rate, and the saturation, oxygen saturation is satisfactory. Once the patient's stability is ensured, you should perform a 12 lead ECG as soon as possible to define the underlying uh, coronary syndrome, whether it is ST elevation myocardial infarction or a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction or uh, unstable angina. Now, if, if it is a ST elevation myocardial infarction, the patient should be referred to uh, reperfusion therapy as soon as possible. This can involve uh, thrombolysis. However, if the facility has cardiac catheterization available readily, the patient should be referred for primary angioplasty. Once the ECG is done, the patient should be stabilized and you should take a focused rapid history ask about the pain ask about the onset and the character and the nature and the severity of the pain ask about other associated symptoms also establish the patient's coronary risk factor profile also check whether the patient has had a myocardial infarction in the past these features may put the patient at a higher risk once you have done the rapid focused history, do a focused physical examination. Once again, looking at the hemodynamics, pulse rate, blood pressure, pulse rhythm, listen to the precordium, check the heart sounds. Usually you hear a fourth heart sound in the setting of acute myocardial infarction. Check the patient's jugular venous pressure. Listen to the patient's lung basis, ensure that there are no crepitations that may suggest impending or established pulmonary edema. Next step is acute management. Acute management involves stabilizing the unstable plaque and for this purpose you give the patient anticoagulants in the way of heparin intravenous infusion or subcutaneous uh, fractionated heparin, uh, sorry unfractionated heparin uh, enoxaparin and in addition to that you need to administer patient with oral antiplatelet agents such as aspirin and uh, clopidogrel. For the patient's pain, you can give sublingual or intravenous glyceryl trinitrate (GTN). In addition to that, if the patient is hypertensive, you can administer an ACE inhibitor agent. If the patient's pulse rate is not too low you can give the patient a beta blocker. The patient should be admitted to a acute care ward. The patient should be kept monitored during this time. This essentially involves the acute phase of the management of acute coronary syndrome or acute myocardial infarction. If the patient has persistent 
chest pain despite all these measures the pain can be managed with uh, subcutaneous or intravenous morphine together with maxalon to prevent uh, nausea and vomiting however the, if the patient's pain is still persistent intravenous glycoprotein 2b3 inhibitor antiplatelet agent infusion should be commenced in the way of abciximab or uh, agrostat if the patient is still not being stabilized the patient should be referred to a cardiac catheterization laboratory all patients with a positive troponin elevation should be referred for early catheterization these patients also need a full blood count and an electro profile done electrolyte profile done cholesterol measurement should be deferred 